Hello and welcome to the Checkpoint Reach podcast. I'm your host Luke Eldon. Today I'm joined by Sud, and uh, today we're also joined by a special guest, Zamros Relay. How are you doing, mate? I'm doing all right. Thanks for having me. Yeah, glad to have you on, man. Nice good to have you. Yeah, you're uh, obviously you well, you Twitch streamer as well, and we have put we'll put all the links in the description below. So definitely go and check that out. And um, yeah, you were telling us that you're also a Spanish and Italian mix. So our first ever. Spanish slash Italian person on the yeah. podcast. So, muchas gracias por tenerme hoy esta mañana en este podcast de Inglaterra. Nadie sabe lo que estoy diciendo. Prometo que no estoy diciendo barbaridades. So yes, I am actually um, Spanish. Is my hello first to language. you too. <laughs> I was just saying thanks for having me, and that I promise I'm not saying anything wrong. <laughs> we believe you. We believe in you. Spanish. I wouldn't even know if you were. No, I, mean, we I know. I know it's bad of me, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. But yeah, uh, Spanish, Italian, citizen of both countries, um, and American cool. as well. So just very weird mix. <laughs> hey, it's different. Hey, it's yeah, a cool, cool mix, man. It's a cool mix. Uh, been to both Italy and Spain, love them both. Been to America, I liked America. So yeah, it ticks all the boxes mm-hmm. for me, pal. <laughs> but um, yeah, we thanks, thank you for joining. And uh, we're going to be discussing some gaming news today. And from the past week, which has mainly been the next gen stuff. So we're going to jump in right now with uh, something that Phil Spencer has been talking about as our first topic, which is uh, console tribalism is one of the worst things in the industry, Xbox boss Phil Spencer says. In a new interview with Xbox, Phil Spencer shared how toxicity can harm the video game industry, calling console tribalism one of the worst things about it and saying that is one of the reasons that would drive him out of the industry. Um... I'm going to assume that we all kind of agree with this because how many times do we see fanboys as I, you know, been named going up against each other about the different console specs and just games and stuff. And it's yeah. can be tedious at times. I find oh, anyway. Oh no, very much tedious. But I think part of the reason why that tribalism came about is because um, ultimately you can't afford to have, you know, four or five different consoles. The, the, the you know, the people, I mean, hey, you know, if we pump everyone's uh, wage up, yeah. But mm-hmm. at the time, right now, like that's not that's not feasible. So, what people want to do, they want to feel good about their choice. Okay, mm-hmm. Why is my choice better than your choice? Why, you know, why is the Xbox better than the PlayStation, or vice versa? Why is the PlayStation better than the Xbox? And then you've got Nintendo on the side route, going like, "Have fun, boys. We're just going to be here with our unique IPs." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, but it's and then you, and then you know you got the people who play PC games, kind of looking down, going like, "Oh." The tribes are fighting again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but no, the I master think, race. I think yep. mostly, ultimately, it's more of they're trying to justify, hey, this is why my choice is better. This is why I made the right choice. It's not so much like an inherent like, oh, this is better than this. It's more like, hey, I need to justify not getting both mm-hmm. sort of thing. And that's, I mean, that's my opinion. I don't have much like science to back that up, but ultimately what i've found most prevalent is that most people are hybrids in sort of there's no true just playstation fanboy just xbox fanboy just nintendo fanboy everyone games in a mix and it's pretty much how much their wallet allows them to spread that that sort of mix out Mm-hmm. So, so that's my opinion. I think I do understand that whole like the toxicity can be tiring, especially mm-hmm. for someone who is very much involved in the development and creation of games and having to deal with that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think I think ultimately it comes down to the trying to justify the choices that uh, people have made. Yeah, I think uh, to be fair as well, uh, this isn't the first time Phil Spencer's talked about this. I, I've seen a few articles in the last few years where he's kind of, you know, said similar things to this and how that. You know, really, it's 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 silly, really, because you know these companies they, they don't base the decisions based off what you know John on Twitter says about uh, you know what Sony should do or what you know Jim says Microsoft should do. You know, John and Jim, yeah, John and Jim, <laughs> you know, the, the console fanboys. But you uh, get what John, I'm Jim, saying. and Billy Bob. This is also like just this. This, I mean, I know now we have the whole Xbox versus PlayStation Five, but you look back. Late '80s, we had you know Dreamcast versus Nintendo versus you know it, this is this has been a pervading pattern mm. 
mm-hmm. um, yeah. for the history of video games. I think as well, you know, I always compare this sort of tribalism. It's the same as any tribalism. You look at sports tribalism with football teams or whatever, basically yeah, whatever sport you want to say, you know, you know, everyone has to have their team be the best and no other team could, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> oh, I do, yeah. Well, well, we know, don't we, first time. But, you know, people, they can't accept, can they, that maybe other teams are good or maybe other teams are not, their team isn't as good. You know what I mean? Like, people just can't accept it and they give any sort of excuse as to why this team's better than this team or it isn't or, hmm. oh, you're this, only better is, because of this or... Hold up, is this where you boys tell me you're Gunner fans? Is this, is this what's happening? No, no. Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Because I was going to have to break some real truths for you boys. <laughs> well, uh, you've actually got a Liverpool fan in me, and yeah. Sud's so a Man City, City fan. fan so, yeah. I uh, I yeah. technically have to say I'm a fan of uh, La Real Sociedad, which is a Spain, yeah. uh, it's a soccer team based. Well, on of Arizona. course, you've just David uh, Silva. inherited one of our legends in David yeah. Silva. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I have to say it because if I don't, my family will find me. I may be in the states, but I'm not safe. <laughs> <laughs> there yeah. you go. And to be fair as well, I mean, Real Sociedad are currently, are they currently top of the league yeah, or top. second, I think? Yeah, well, there's La Real Sociedad and then there's uh, La Real Sociedad de Madrid. So two different teams. Oh, oh there you go. See, I've sure never even knew yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So one's based in the middle, one's based in the north. So the north one is a smaller club. They do all right, but, you know, it's a smaller club and it's for, the, you know, that's the local club. So that's why yeah. so, I support it. Right. Got you. Cool. Well, then, you know, um, in football, uh, the, yeah, it definitely relates with tribalism in football, like Sub was touching mm-hmm. on. And that does seem Club to... versus clubs, even sport versus sport. You know, yeah, you hear exactly. That, especially yeah. More, more in the States versus Europe. Europe, soccer pretty much is the king in terms of widespread popularity. But in the, in the United States, you have baseball fans versus hockey fans mm-hmm. versus football fans. <laughs> yeah. So, like, 100% tribalism is a thing. I, I don't think yeah. it's unique to video games and i know that you know spencer spoke it more because of it's in with his realm of interest he's saying you know the the that tribalism is what drives me nuts and i'm sitting here going like it's kind of humanity <laughs> that's driving you nuts there it is i did I, what i do find interesting about his comments is how he goes on to say that you know it, it could be the thing that drives him out of the industry which is seems pretty extreme but mm. um you know, obviously, like gets him down as well doesn't it like gets mm. down. this sort of constant like knocking of other companies and you know, knocking of oh, this game, this game's better on this system, and blah blah blah. It's I don't know. It's kind of all these points are kind of mute anyway. At the end of the day, because you know everything's subjective. Nothing's object. There's not many things in life that are objective. There's a few things, obviously, that you know. Well, hold up. Graphic quality and things like that. <laughs> you can look at one system yeah, and how, so. how the how it looks, and then another one, and one of them's going to look objective. But having said better. that, so, you know, could you say that six frame per second is objectively better than? You know, 4K, for example, like, it's a subjective thing. Some people prefer frame rate, some people prefer resolution. You know, that's what I'm trying to get at. You know, people that Very argue about this and that, and you know, because you see people, don't you, saying, you know, 30 FPS peasants and stuff like that. <laughs> and, you know, the people that don't like, you know, and you, you also see people saying, oh, 4K is overrated and HDR is overrated. So it's like, you know, and, and we've probably all got opinions on that, which one prefer. But at the end of the day, it's all subjective. There's no objectively better way of playing i guess look i just want my gameplay to be smooth and to it to yep. look pretty mm-hmm. once i've reached that base baritone i don't care how many extra pixels i've yep. got yeah i'm I'm, wrong. I'm the yep. same i i would we're probably out of the tribalism mindset of uh, consoles now as well so anyway us two yeah. because we've ended up with both we're systems both, really, in the last so. gen and this gen essentially because we've both got an S and a PS5, so it's kind of yeah. like eh, I'm just like, just like use Amro. So I'm just you know if if I, I just want to play a good game and I'll pick it up on any system now at this point. So I'm well, not I mean, really yeah. in a tribalism. I'm not really in one camp or the other at the moment. And uh, as as I've I think we were talking a little bit about this, but before we started, I'm definitely not in that tribe. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm still no. sitting on an Xbox 360 because there was nothing on Xbox One that I really wanted to play, and I didn't feel like picking up a PS4. And now I'm looking at everyone trying to get a PS5, and I'm like, maybe I'll mm-hmm. wait. This sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, I don't blame. To be fair as well, you, you're in the, you're in the upper tribe, aren't you? The uh, PC master race. So. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> you can just like look down at everyone and go like, ah, well, we're all better than you. Anyway. <laughs> well, it's like I've got a good selection coming in on the yeah. PC. You know, that's, that's a, and ironically, that's why the other part of my mix is very heavily the Nintendo stuff because it doesn't mm. show up on the PC. So no, I that's true. get the Nintendo stuff. To, <laughs> you know, so, I mean, uh, even the uh, even the PlayStation exclusives are turning up on PC these days. 
you know, and you, you look because, like Horizon Zero Dawn and things like that. So yeah, it'll delayed, but it'll get there. Yeah, and, delayed. Uh, but, actually, yeah. Uh, good example is Monster Hunter World. Um, yep. That that was a uh, came out a couple of years ago. Came out exclusively for at first for PlayStation, but they said, "Oh no, it is going to come to PC. It's just going to be delayed." Mm-hmm. I said, "I have no need to buy a PS for this. It's just going to be. I don't mind waiting." And that's why I did. Yeah, that's it. I think a lot of things probably do pull down. If you don't mind waiting for things, then hmm. not oh, really man, in suddenly a rush. there's discounts and deals. Exactly. That's it. Like I picked up <laughs> I picked up Mortal Kombat eleven for sixty bucks. Everything. Expansion that's priced at thirty five dollars, all the DLC mm-hmm. and the base game that's now set at like forty or fifty bucks, but it was sixty on release as well. Mm-hmm. There you go, you're winning. And see, <laughs> I well, I didn't rush, but I was in the, I guess I was in the race to buy a PS5 and managed to get one, luckily enough, and then only for it to be broken on oh. arrival. I know. The applause <laughs> have planned. to stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the uh, green screen of death. The it? green screen of death. And now, I, so I'm waiting, Sony is sending out a box, I've got to send it back, yada, yada. But I'm just regretting rushing to try and get the day one console. I, I... Well, it's not just that. I guess your, either. your enthusiasm has probably obviously gone down now because it's like eh. it has as a result. Yeah, I mean, sure, when you get it back, you might get a bit of a oh, okay. But oh, it's definitely at the minute, come back. Yeah. Well, I mean, hey, at least you didn't break it on purpose. Like you know, you had those. Oh the, yeah, the, oh, all I the saw guys some on of them videos. Oh, did the videos of the people like breaking the PS3 or the ones that are blowing vape smoke into the Xbox? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was launch. quite funny though. To be fair. Little, literally, Microsoft had to make a release. It's like we can't believe we're saying this. Yeah. Don't do this thing. <laughs> <laughs> see i i don't get that like um like you were touching on did you guys see the one with um the lad who bought a ps5 and then just smashed it outside yeah i saw that one i was like yeah, yeah, why just... mate like for as they call it clout it's like mm. come on hey you know what if he has that kind of money to burn more power to him me oh. i prefer going to a good restaurant but that's just me <laughs> i like i like good food i like the problem good is i didn't have a choice i'm spanish italian i had to like these things <laughs> Yeah. The problem with that one, though, is that he it will have worked because he will have made far more money from that video than it cost him to buy the PS5. I don't know. It was on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, but a lot you of these, you know, really... how many likes and things all that have got and how many views, it's like... Uh, Hold up. I, but no, you know. no, no, no. But just straight likes doesn't give me money. You know, <laughs> it doesn't give him money either. He is, needs to be able to monetize that video. And, and there's no monetization it... on Twitter for the video. No, true. So... Unless he has some... I don't, I don't know if he had links. Or but anyway, even... I don't agree with it anyway. It's ridiculous. To do I mean, if maybe he was just pursuing the fame and again, you know, yeah. see previous statement, more power to him. And for I, wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to be famous for that. But that's just me. I mean, he's well, famous for being a dick as well. Like, come on. Yeah. And then it's <laughs> just part of the course, really. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for all we know as well, he could have just had another one sitting in the back. Bet you he uh, did. Uh, he probably did. He probably he probably a scalper that bought about five, ten of them or something. So. Oh, the I mean, scalpers we must have all seen that. Jesus. Did you all see that scalper that had bought like a thousand of them or something? Or something like that? It was ridiculous. Well, it was like a group uh, of people that had bought like over a thousand PS5s at once on eBay, and it's just like guys, don't buy don't buy consoles from scalpers. Make them sit, make them make them yeah. eat that cost. I mean, yeah, some people have been buying them, them for like a thousand pounds and stuff, and it's like, come on, like it's just not worth it. It's mm. not worth it. You know, these consoles anyway, they have re- refreshes that are always better than the first console. So, I mean, mm. you know, I've been a so we've both been you know, we've both been suckers and bought the first PS5, but I'd never buy one for double the price of what it's supposed to be. No. no, that's ridiculous. I mean, to be honest, I, may, I just make a rule of not buying off scalpers in the first place because yeah. I don't want them to succeed in what they're doing. But you know, I guess some. I feel like majority of people don't like scalpers, but there are obviously clearly a lot of them out there that don't mind what they're doing. So no, yeah. That's All it. we can say is please don't buy off a scalper. But, I mean, they're getting into the market talks, and if they're getting, you know, <laughs> if they're making money off it, then why would they stop doing it? Yeah, that's the issue. But, but that's what I'm saying, guys. You know, for everyone listening in today, please don't buy from scalpers. Make them suffer for having bought a thousand PS5s because when the PS6 comes out, they won't be able to buy a thousand and you'll be able to pick it up at a cheaper rate. Well, they also, I, I saw exactly. recently Sony on Twitter announced they're going to, there's more consoles available before Christmas. And it's like, yeah, but we all know what's going to happen. The scalpers yeah. will be back. <laughs> no, but the, the, the other thing is, and, and this is this is a Sony thing that I've noticed more, is that they like to have a limited supply. And I'm saying this because the things we're hearing about, scalping, um, you know, the, the limited supplies. Oh, suddenly more supplies before Christmas. This has been their pattern 
for new console releases. And I'm not saying Xbox is clean in this regard. I'm just saying it at this point, it's the same song with the with the P with uh, Sony and the P PlayStation in general. Like they, they like to do this. And I get it. I get it. It works. Scarcity increases demand. I don't know why it works that way, but it works. Clearly yeah. something in our animal brains go, oh, there's less of them. Now I need it more because of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a market employee for sure, it would seem. And like you said, Scass, it, it does. It just works. So I until mean, the day it doesn't work, then they're, they're going to keep doing it, probably. You probably use that as a segue because uh, it clearly has worked, hasn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, because segue and... Yeah, well, yeah, it's basically topic two is going to be Sony-related anyway. And as I mentioned, yeah, they have... Um, they have uh, the biggest selling console launch in history, they have announced, and uh, Sony expects its next-gen console to outperform its predecessor, the PS4, by the current fiscal year, end of the current fiscal year, sorry, uh, and the PS4 sold 7.6 million units during the first comparable period, so yeah, PS5's on course to, to smash the records, but there is no surprise there, is there? No, not really, but for a couple of factors, not just not just only, okay, it's a new console. It's going to have demand just because everybody's upgrading. People who want more um, exclusives are going to buy it. That sort of thing, um, especially with. And I think this was very intelligent on, on PlayStation's part. They have that limited exclusive bundle. Like if you get it, you get access to a bunch of games that are going to, that are going to be exclusive mm-hmm. on the PS5. So I think that was a really good thing that probably helped push up demand. But I know we said, hey, this is you know it's the greatest you know we've outsold the ps4 yeah okay hey we're in the middle of a worldwide quarantine you want to know that list the number of activities you can do in your house uh video game is pretty high up there in terms of things you can do i'm not surprised that they've had like more demand than ever because they've have a more trapped market they have a cornered market that people who would normally go out clubbing rather than you know might then they may not have picked it up until after the new years mm-hmm. now don't have anything to do they're going to pick it up nintendo's been doing very well with their switch their switch buys you know when animal crossing came out right in the beginning of, of the whole worldwide coming around in march switches were sold out nobody could find a switch it's a this is this is like saying oh my god we have this great success and in truth it's hey look at time and circumstance that's going to help attribute because the PS5 has had more difficulties in terms of its actual launch with uh, systems not working and, and other issues that would have normally impaired it. And I think um, I think we're we're losing sight of that, but mostly just because hey, we're all trapped in our house. You know, just like Luke, you got yours, it didn't work. You have to send it back. You're mm-hmm. waiting for the one to come back. That's getting a little glossed over just because there's not so much. There's only so many books in my house, right? <laughs> yeah. I say that, but like I've got these three bookcases and more in the background. Yeah, so. I was looking, then I was thinking, you've got quite a lot, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can we tell that I have a lot of hobbies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely not surprising given that we also heard that obviously Microsoft said that you know they have the biggest launch in Xbox history, you know, with uh, the Series X and S. So it would be very shocking if PlayStation didn't also have the highest, wouldn't it? To be honest, yeah. um, I don't know. Yeah. It's one of those things. I mean, like you said, it, it does seem that. It seems to me, though, that, you know, the PlayStation brand in general, it's probably never been stronger than right now, to be honest, um, compared to the competition. I think, you know, you look at like you look at you look at some of the exclusives they had this generation, you compare it to the competition. OK, you know, Nintendo, Nintendo to be honest, I never compare places to Nintendo because Nintendo for me is its own thing. Well, I, Nintendo, you know, Nintendo got out of console wars, right? Yeah, Back exactly. In- Back so. in GameCube Wii era, like we're talking before, you know, with, with the first Xbox, Nintendo was already going like, guys, do whatever you want. I'm going to be in my corner with my IPs. That's how I'm going to stay alive. I'm going to, every, you know, the PlayStation and Xbox for the last couple of generations, I've been fighting for the, the gamer market. And, mm. I, and I do the air quotes there because Nintendo shifted their, fo- their focus and being like, we don't give a shit about just the gamer. We want everybody we want the family we want the kids the parents everybody how that, many that people was... had the Wii? yeah a lot it was insane yeah. people i go around to people's houses and they never even talked about games or consoles and they've just got a Wii sat there and i'm like well, oh okay you got the Wii. <laughs> strange but strange, there we go. strange with the Wii though because uh with the Wii, it, it did so well in its first two or three years and then it literally just dropped off a cliff when people realized yeah it doesn't have any games anymore <laughs> well there's no third party support coming through and things like that but uh, to be fair to the switch they've definitely I mean, 
I mean, the third party support was never going to be as good as uh, on you know. No, because the market, all the third because... parties are like, we want to make the prettiest game with the yeah, highest and obviously definition. the Switch hardware is limited. You know, yeah, and it, and Nintendo's always been like, I'm going to do my own so. thing. So they got out of the console war. I mean, and to be fair, when that started between Sony and and Xbox, Nintendo was like. Yo, we did this. We're we're done. We're good. <laughs> like mm. I've earned my stripes. I'm going to and and I think they did this. They did a mark smart play. I think honestly, mm. they they have brand recognition that has that's keeping them. I, I say like in the past sense. No, they're still in the market. They're still a wildly successful company, and I feel like like that can't be underestimated. Now, hey, you've got PlayStation and Xbox fighting for like that card line, and it's true that. In this case, Xbox has been losing in that exclusivity mm. market. And to be fair, they're owned by Microsoft. Microsoft was never going to say, just keep it on the Xbox. There's always going to be that like PC, the PC guys are going to get it too. And I think mm -hmm. that's where some people are like, oh, you're losing out on that front. But at the same time, it's like some people do prefer the console and integration of controllers for the Xbox to PC gamers, for example, is much smoother than with the PlayStation controls. So yeah. there's give and take. Um, I know that uh, Xbox has the Game Pass, which is how they've pretty much been more competitive. It's saying, hey, we have a massive library that we can share with you with a subscription platform. And I think that's how they may not be winning on the exclusivity market, but I think they're winning in, they're keeping in the competition in that sense by saying, hey, all these games that you can play because of you know uh, of our system, do this service. Here you go. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, you touch but... on Game Pass, and that's actually something that PlayStation have uh, been speaking about. Sony CEO Jim Ryan saying that there's news to come on a PlayStation response to Xbox Game Pass. So that'll be interesting to see what the PlayStation do on that front. Because, I mean, me and you, Sud, we've been champion in uh, Game Pass for, what, years? A couple, of year a couple of years now, probably? I don't know. They all blur into one, but we are real big fans of the subscription-based service. We think it offers a lot of good value, so... Sony have to respond with something, and now they look, finally looks like they're going to after years of saying that. Well, didn't they say it wasn't going to work and start? Yeah, yeah, they did. Um, to be fair, and you know that's clearly been proven that you know they weren't right on that one. But yeah, I mean, the previous point I was just going to make about the PlayStation was that you know the reason why the PS Five it seems is probably going to carry on being a good success is because you know they built up so much goodwill. The PlayStation, you know, the PlayStation Four and Sony with their exclusives you know we all know spider-man horizon god of war you know they're all you know great games or staple games and, that people and now enjoy. you have Sp um, spider-man with miles morales yeah exactly you know? miles morales has done really well that seems to be reviewing while people are enjoying it so and that's the one thing xbox didn't have however as we know the one thing that xbox has not secretly but has been doing over the last couple of years is building their studios up and you know with game pass as well game pass has been a, a massive success for them um and you know yeah, things can change very quickly in this industry, as we know. So, you know, Sony are on top now, and I do think that will carry on the PlayStation 5 because, you know, you look at the slate of games that will probably be out there, it's, it's, it's looking good for them. But the problem with Xbox and it is we don't know what's coming, like in terms of we know some of the games that are coming. We've heard about that Avowed game, and, you know, the, there's other exclusives. They're going to obviously have their Gears and Halo and things like that, and Forza, um, as they're obviously renowned for. But, you know, we don't know what a lot of their studios are working on, so that's a bit of wait and see. But, however, with Game Pass, we know all those games will be day one on their console, which is a very attractive prospect for a lot of people, especially, um, like Zan Ross, you mentioned, it, a lot of people at the minute, you know, don't have a lot of money. You know, there's a lot of people on budgets. So Game Pass, especially with the Series S as well, that's a very um, attractive proposition for a lot of people. So I think over time that Series S will actually do really well for them. But... PlayStation do definitely needs a response because that is one area that, that you know subscription services is the one area for me that Xbox has them beat pretty easily. Well, to be like and, and like you mentioned, you said I think it's going to do better with time, and I agree with that because mm -hmm. right now you know there's the hype, everyone's going for the PlayStation, also because some of those sort of like release day exclusives, sort of like the hype. I want to play that, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's like the other ones will gather, they will get those the the sales, they will get, and I I don't think by any means. Um, what was it? I, I know people back when before before this was released when they were still just like for saying, oh, this is gonna have this. And a lot of people are like, oh, that's it. PlayStation's gonna win. You know, they're finally it's finally gonna be over. And literally my reaction every time has been like, we'll see. And this is not because I care. I'm not like, yes, I have an Xbox 360. I don't have a, a, the equivalent to PlayStation, but it doesn't mean I'm I'm an Xbox fan over the PlayStation fan. I 
I like to take a look and see, hey, what are what is one offering versus the other? Mm -hmm. PlayStation has always banked, and it's now a couple of generations now on its exclusives. That's how they've kept in the game. Mm -hmm. They're still doing that. Great. It's clearly worked. There's no, you know, if something's worked, don't fix it, sort of thing. And that's that's the very much the thing. I know Xbox tried to do that, the exclusivity back in the day, you know, with the 360, and they had exclusive titles and didn't really pan out the same way for PlayStation because, like I mentioned earlier in this podcast, at the end of the day, they're owned by Microsoft. It's never going to be just exclusive on the Xbox. So then once it's ex once it's on the Xbox and the PC, the PlayStation is going to get it like shortly after. It just doesn't make it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I think as well, to be fair, it's fair to say that the one, I, if Xbox One had had a better generation, then I think um, Microsoft would be in a, an extremely strong position now because if they'd have had good exclusives and well, on top of Game Pass as well, it would be all, almost a sort of two pronged attack on Sony because, yeah, we all know Sony are renowned for exclusives, but. If Microsoft also had a you know equally as good a generation, then there's no doubt about it that Microsoft is ahead on subscription services and software. They, you know, I mean, it's not software, sorry, on um, you know hardware. I think they, yeah. I think Xbox definitely build their systems better than Sony. To be honest with you, I mean, you look at the form factor of the PlayStation Five. Yeah, you know, it's, I'm looking at mine right now. It's so massive, and it's just it's a very ugly console, unfortunately. I completely agree. Um, you, te when the, you text me when you got it and you're like, honestly, Lou, it's like it's so massive. much bigger than you think. And I was like, yeah. obviously I was thinking, yeah, of course. I you know, I take your point on board. And then when I actually took it out of myself, I was like, Jesus, yeah, that is huge. Well, I compare it to, of course, it's, you know, I don't, I have the Series S, which is the smaller one, not the Series X. I know people say sometimes, you know, it's a little bit bulky, the Series X, but the Series S is such a nice looking machine. It's so small. I mean, it's not as powerful as the PlayStation, obviously, the PlayStation 5, but you know, I just their form factor is really good on Xbox. It's nice and simple. It looks clean. Whereas, yeah, I, I don't know. This PlayStation, yeah, I'm not well, this new one. This new one, uh, I, I don't know what direction they were going with the design, but I definitely no, like I don't it. like it. Yeah, design. not for me either. Nope. I, they will, I think they'll change it, obviously. They're going to have a revision at some point down the line, but or even if you they know. don't, because sometimes the yeah. uh, you know ugly duckling stays. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, if it delivers, uh, let's be honest, like if it delivers on everything else, are we going to really harp about the look of no, the no, console? of course, yeah, nah. <laughs> no. But I, I just think I'm, in general, I think it's, it's an area Xbox do excel in is their console designs. I think, yeah, it, it's just, to some people, it does make a difference. Some people, you know, there is some people that genuinely. Well, care they, uh, about how their you know system how their like setup looks and things like that and they don't mm -hmm. like things being out of place and so maybe for a few people it would make a difference but i think in general the the one area we all know it's, it's games at the end of the day that's what we play the systems for it's games that's what that's what <laughs> people want to do on their systems most of the time so if you have if you have a weaker game lineup you're probably not going to do as well and that's what happened to xbox this past generation unfortunately for them well, that said, you know, Xbox had its ugly duckling. duckling. It was the Xbox itself. The first yeah. version. Was oh, the, yeah, was I had that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was awful. And it's yeah, fair to say was... the Xbox One wasn't very nice either. That VCR, I mean, VCR machine was too big. And, well, the one I've so, got. Still... Yeah, it wasn't very nice. <laughs> you know, that was not very nice. You know what? That grew on me over time. I think I, think... I got a bit nostalgic yeah. with it. But I think, I think, uh, Sad, you made some excellent points there in that mm. ultimately... Xbox does need to step up. Maybe not necessarily an exclusive. Like, either they have to deliver. They it's have to quality. deliver more it's in quality some thing. something, either quality or or mm. or something um, that PlayStation can't follow up on. And honestly, what I think would be a good avenue for Xbox to pursue, and I'll explain why. Um, Crossplay. Mm. If they so, so now in the last year or so, a little more than that, crossplay has started to happen between consoles and computers. Mm -hmm. And I think that Xbox being owned by Microsoft can really capitalize on that. Sure, one would say, well, okay, but why play? Why do that? You know, you're you're just gonna start de dealing with the PC streams. But if you have the option to allow it, I'm saying not forced, uh, mm -hmm. not forcing them to the consoles to play with the PCs and vice versa. But if they allow that you choose to play with, you know, I think that's gonna get a lot of people who, you know, maybe they can't afford a high end gaming computer, but they could afford the Xbox. So they buy the Xbox, but now they can play not only with all their friends on Xbox, but all of their computer friends as well. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, 
that's something that PlayStation is never going to allow because number one, they'd have to give up the exclusivity. Mm, true. So they're not, they're not, they've never been, they've not supported it in the past and they're not looking to support it in the future mm -hmm. because they want, they want less titles being on multiple systems. Yeah. And I wouldn't this, mind that option. Situation, as long yeah. as you could uh, turn it on and off. Because um, I think that's the clear yeah. point. Because yeah, some games, for example, Warzone, I hate the consoles it. Would you... get slaughtered. <laughs> yeah, I, I hate mean, playing you, Warzone. You know, don't you, Luke? Warzone. I mean, it, it, you know, it's again, if you're playing against PC players, you're gonna lose. I mean, it's simple as that. I mean, yeah, most of the time, mm -hmm. unless they're but, really um, bad. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Or you've got a console player that's a god or something. But you know, but even the I best console players gonna don't be... discount that possibility of them being really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, true. true. But the point, the only thing I'd say, in probably maybe slightly in. Uh, not defense of Sony in um I'm trying to think of the word really to, to maybe to counter your point about Sony a little bit is um Sony have to me started to be a little bit more lax with their games and where they are I mean you look at how many games now are now okay they're not going day one to PC which they I don't think they will for a long time if ever however they are starting to migrate a few of their games across you look at Horizon Zero Dawn probably being the biggest example there's been rumors about God of War coming to PC which I think will happen so but here's here's the here, here's my counterpoint to that is it mm -hmm. sony or is it the studios that have been making their exclusives that are sort of finally pushing back and saying we're done like we'll give you a limited or we'll give you a window of exclusivity but we're not going to mm -hmm. step out of not getting the money from the other i don't markets. well i don't with the horizon no because they, they do own gorilla so that i mean they could effectively they can effectively no. order them around no, can't no. They? No, well, I wasn't. I wasn't thinking Zero Dawn. Actually, I was thinking yeah. Monster Hunter World in my head. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, uh, of course. Yeah. Because that, was, I, that was so, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. that was not. Yeah, yeah. That was Capcom. That wasn't. Yeah. That was, so I was yeah. thinking more yeah, yeah. that that route because they do have exclusive games from other studios, yeah. their own internal studios. To your point, mm. well, they're the boss. They can, yeah, yeah, they that's can what set I was thinking. Sorry. That, yeah. that, sorry, that was the point I was making. Now that they are being a little bit, they are being a little bit more sort of like, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll let you have this one. Not for, look, don't get me wrong, it's nowhere near the same as Xbox. Xbox is pretty much unanimous now with P they're both and anything that goes on Xbox is on PC and that's no that's okay, okay, but but Horizon Zero Dawn came out in 2017. So it's been a while. When was yeah, it, it released a while. for PC? Uh earlier it was August, was it? July, August this year. So we're we're talking it's a long time, yeah. Three, three years. plus three years. years. That's... But what I'm saying is, uh, you wouldn't have got that from Sony five years ago. They would have just been like, never, never come into PC, never. True. That's I'm just true. saying slowly, slowly but surely. <laughs> That's very no, slow. No, actually, well, the point I was going to make is, I, I actually, I do agree with you, though, because I think your point about in the future, I think Sony have to do this. They're going to have to start doing this. They're going to have to move with where the market's going. Everything is going towards a unanimous sort of console PC thing. And Sony, as we know, have been... a, a I've been very slow on this uptake. I think it's fair to say, and but I, I do think they are going to have to change eventually because that's the way the market's going to shift eventually. So what I'm saying is, but I think Sony are trying as long as possible to hold on to that. Oh, we want our initial 10 million consoles sellers, and we want our PS4 to sell, but about PS5 to sell. But eventually, I do think in five, ten years, they're all going to be having to, you know, be on everything eventually yeah. because that's the way it's going. I mean, that said, uh, again, I'm just going to point out. Yeah, February 2017. Earlier, let's let's be generous. Let's say it was January, um, yeah. 2020. Three years. That is a mainstay life cycle of a console. So it wasn't so much we're going to give it now. It's we've got the PS5 coming out. We don't need to hold on to this one anymore. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a reason why they chose Horizon Zero Dawn and didn't choose um, God of War, isn't there? Mm -hmm. as, the, as one of the first games i mean <laughs> because they know that obviously if they put god of war on there they're going to get more backlash from their own fans and things like that. Oh, i get it but i think eventually a lot of these fans of they're gonna have to just accept that this is the way things are going and i do think that time will start to reduce over time like i think you'll start seeing it may be reduced down to like 18 months and then 12 months and then i do think that will happen eventually I think it's going to, I think the way it's going to progress is it's going to be starting to be the non PlayStation owned uh, mm -hmm. studios that are making exclusives are going to start pushing to be allowed to open, to open it to other consoles, to other systems. And Death Stranding then, is a good example. Yeah. They're going to want think, that revenue source. You know, Death Stranding was a game that came to PC. I mean, it came out on PlayStation November 2019. And I think it was on PC in 
June or July of this year. I think so, I think it was around so around an eight month was was that about eight months seven mm, eight months somewhere around that maybe a little bit longer maybe nine months but that's a good example um, Zamros of what you were saying about how you know companies that aren't owned by Sony like Consumer Productions saying no we're, we're going to release on PC <laughs> and there's nothing you can kind of do about it. They should as so, well, though, uh, because it's going to get more players of their game, obviously, and, uh, and open yeah. up more revenue source and streams. Yeah, so yeah. why wouldn't they? So at they the end of the day, what, what PlayStation has always been doing, and, and, and we see it now with you know the last, the last uh, games that were came out for PS4 and the games that are coming out for PS5, it's the, can we get the guy who has a PC, who has a Nintendo, who has an Xbox, to buy our system for this game? Now... Yeah two generations ago, three generations ago, and we're talking video game generations, guys. I'm not talking about my great-grandfather playing video games. Come on now. <laughs> um, they could do that. They could make that gamble and win because the game libraries were much, much smaller. If you actually look at the releases for how many games came out for Nintendo 64, for Dreamcast, for the Game Boy Color, for Game Boy Advance, it's a much smaller list. Now, games, not only because the market has demanded backwards compatibility of let me play my old games as well like they can't get someone to just and nintendo struggle is struggling with this too by the way so this is not just a playstation thing this is this is a cross the board sort of phenomena where it goes well i'm not going to buy a whole console just for breath of the wild just for ghost of tsushima it's not worth it i have i have this backlog that i need to get through i can't be spending and especially now with consoles being more and more expensive, because that's the other thing. Like, I think that's also a factor that is making it harder for, for someone to be like, oh, I'll just pick up an Xbox for this game. Because now it's like, you know what? I haven't even looked at the prices, but I know it, I know it's in the $400, $500 range, I want to say, like right off the top of my head. It's like... To be fair, you know, though, I, if you did want to jump on the Xbox next gen, you could get the S for £250, I think it was, and $299. $299, yeah. So yeah, that's actually, definitely that's, more that's, affordable although, option. Although, although, but it's a lot less powerful. Let's be honest, you can't be getting any of those at the minute because nothing's in stock for <laughs> Xbox. Or what, is it even so the S probably, sold out now? I think so. Yeah. I think, well, I don't, I, I, mean, I haven't checked recently, well, I mean, I'm pretty but, sure they didn't make as many as the X. So. I mean, comparatively, I mean, the, the price, uh, outside of inflation and how that just increases the price of things in general, a Nintendo 64 back in oh, 90, early 2000, late 90s, I have no idea. Yeah, 1994. No, no, no. The N64 in 1999 was about $120, and that yeah. came with Pokemon Stadium. I know because that's what I bought back in the day. I saved. I had about a three dollar allowance. I and I, me and my brother we saved it for weeks, and we got lucky. You know, there were some birthdays and a couple yeah. things that helped boost up the pay, the pace, so we got a little sooner rather than later. But that was that was um you know it's $120. That's two games now whole yeah. system to be fair though that was that wouldn't have been at launch though would it i mean the nintendo 64 no. came out in like 96 97 something like that i can't remember. i it think it's 98, 98 but you know what or maybe not you might be right it could be 98 it's one of them years i can't remember it's a long time ago i was only no oh, Maybe i was like seven 19... <laughs> june of 1996 know. that's what it was it came out in right. june of 1996 early, my yeah. defense i was five years old i picked it up saying that well later. i was i'd have been four so <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just saying that, like... I'm that sorry, am great. I the old man in the group? <laughs> My face just ages. <laughs> no, to be fair, though, I get your point. I mean, it is, you know, you, you think of, like, games... I mean, it's actually, you know, you say $120. Would that even get you two games in the US now? I mean, dollar games yes. are now going up to $70, $60, $70. Some, some are 70 so it's like... You only you're only just getting two games for that hundred and twenty dollars nowadays. Whereas, like you said, you get a, in nineteen ninety nine, you could have picked up a, a brand new console with a. I mean, Pokemon Stadium was a great game as well. I love that game. Well, and, actually, uh, to be to, to be fair, the sixty cap seems um, to be a hard cap or, or a harder cap that the market has been kind of resisting price points above it. They're going like, yeah. Apparently, the rumors are all though next gen is going to be seventy. Yeah. I mean, you look. It was NBA two K twenty one that went to seventy. Uh, oh, oh obviously yes. there's tell the whole me, tell me about all those sports games that really <laughs> yeah no no but um it's like the, the sony games of course as we know uh, they're pushing mm. their prices up demon souls 70 and yeah. all that so it's gonna I don't be an expensive uh, generation that's for sure but I, I just want to go back to the uh to the game pass sort of point um how, i mean how, how do you two i kind of want to get your two's take on how you think this will look for sony i mean do we literally think it'll be a copy and paste of game pass 
Or do you think Sony haven't got the what's the word? What the infrastructure? Uh, to no, I was going to say haven't got the haven't got the cojones or the balls to do cojones. You know, um, even in nineteen no, no, film. No, no. <laughs> yeah, like you know, I thought I'd use a bit of Cajoni. Okay, you know what? Yeah, You're like gonna cojones. pronounce it right. Los cojones. Oh, there you go. I'll let you pronounce it more. But basically, have they got yeah, whatever that is have to do they it got to do the to do stones a game. to do yeah, it. That's a probably a better word to use. Yes. One hundred percent. Oh when okay, come on. Do we do we not all remember with the last generation and the connect and that all fiesta mm. that was. i remember it well Pre- yeah that crap <laughs> playstation yeah. literally was like we're going to copy paste the xbox selling point and market it ourselves <laughs> literally that was that was the press release and every- i think it would be this i've got to say i think it would be the smart thing to do <laughs> if I was Sony, this- like, yeah, copy. Mate, look yeah. at everything on demand though they're all pretty much the same sort of services when yeah you, everyone copies I mean, each other don't they yeah so i'm, I'm going to imagine that sony would do the same thing which is why streaming services are now being pirated at greater frequencies because we got away from cable because we didn't want to have four fi- four fifteen different subscriptions. Mm. Now we're back to fourteen fifteen subscriptions. <laughs> I know a bunch of people taking out pirate hats, going like, "We're sailing, buckos." <laughs> yeah, I the think, amount I have though, at the moment is a disgrace. Need to cut down on that. Yeah, I know it's true, but I, I think for me that the one difference that I see is I the one area I don't think it will be completely copy and paste is I don't think they're going to put their games in first day. On this, on, uh, they're, they're not going to suddenly go Horizon Forbidden West is in day one because why would they do that because at the end of the day they know their games sell millions of copies and actually I wanted to ask you so dead quick it. about this when we were talking about first party exclusives and stuff like that mm. do you not feel like Gear, uh, sorry Gears well I'm going to mention Gears but Xbox yep. relied on Halo and Gears so much that when their popularities mm. declined a little bit that they started suffering and obviously they didn't have the, the next first party exclusives to back them up either they were pretty poor. Is that right? Because I'm not a Halo player, as you know. So did like the Halo games decline in popularity? Yeah, uh, I yes. mean that's obvious. I mean, pretty yes obvious. And no, I mean. it, it lasts until about. It's not obvious, lad. If you don't play them, no, <laughs> I don't no, take any is, notice no, whatsoever. I'm saying I think it, I think it's obvious in terms of you look at the state Halo Infinite's in now. I mean, yeah. in terms of how it's it's not looking good, is it? I mean, we all saw that infamous the infamous memes of Craig and things like that. I mean, well, to to be um, perfectly fair, what really happened was that Bungie stopped being in stopped making the Halo franchise, yeah. and they had a, a whole new studio. But pretty much what happened is, and this is the Achilles heel on the Xbox side. It's why they don't have exclusive. It's it's why they are having a harder time competing against the PlayStation exclusives. It's they don't they didn't have the studio set up for it they had bungie bungie was doing a fantastic job bungie finally said we're done with halo we don't want to do anything more they think their last game was actually halo reach um and then they said we're out they started developing destiny which uh mm-hmm. by the way that they released a newest expansion for destiny 2 uh november 10th beyond light it's literally downloaded i'm going to play this afterwards <laughs> i've been i've been working and it's been being pushed back but like i'm literally going like i'm gonna do this um <laughs> but bungie like left and then starting with halo 4 suddenly you the the halo fanboys except that's what i'm going to turn weren't as hyped about it anymore mm-hmm. as they used to be something changed why halo as a game yeah fantastic shooter still smooth mm-hmm. um i still and you you definitely feel that when you play destiny because you know it's got its daddy's eyes in that regard but what happened was there was a story and it might have been, you'd see people like, ah, not really. No, but it had, you know, the first Halo grabbed me from a story perspective. I was actually interested. What were the Halo for? The whole the whole progress was fun. It was engaging. Um, and then the two and three delivered for the most part in terms of, of memorable characters. And then four went in the sort of jumping the shark for me. And I know that I didn't, I like I watched, like I figured out what the story was, watched the videos and not really as engaged as I was in the past. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's fair to say you're right. When Bungie left, that you know that was for a lot of people that was the point where they go, "Ah, oh, I don't care about Halo anymore." You know, the, I think for a lot of people that was the point where they go, "Yeah, whatever." Um, I, I I agree with you in a sense that Halo still, you know, even Halo Five, like which, I mean, from a story perspective, wasn't good, but the game still felt good to play. You know, and I actually think Halo Infinite will feel good to play. I think it'll be a good game to play. It's if they can, but they don't. Three, four, three. They definitely don't have that magic that Bungie has. There was just something about Bungie with Halo that, and like you said, 
you know, we've got a friend of the show, you know, Perk, somebody used to be a co-host that he loves Destiny, doesn't he? He loves the Oh, feel big of it. Destiny guy. Yeah. Loves he loves it. it. He loves he basically loves Bungie, doesn't he? He loves the way, you know, they operate. And I think to be fair, they've they found some of Destiny a mass you know, magical formula. I've always said that the game for me that feels the best to play this generation is Destiny. I think of the way it plays, the gunplay is just unmatched by anything else really. Personally, um, this generation. Sorry, I, 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 you got me. I'm, I'm in that group. Why do you think yeah, I play? It is true, though, isn't it? I think the game, the game feels so good to play. I mean, it's so nice. I mean, um, and that's not to say Destiny Two doesn't have its flaws. That other games oh, don't yeah, have yeah, their flaws. Like, oh my god, I, I could definitely go into that route as well. Just you know, from the the smoothness for me that, and that's that's when I've used you know used that earlier when we were talking when I said about um, Mortal Kombat Eleven. If this is clunky as heck, I'm going to return it, sort of thing. Mm. Um, gameplay has to be smooth. Um, and that's not to say, oh, only the latest generation are going to be smooth. No, no, no. You want an example of a game that's still smoother than its, you know, than in, than its, uh, not not its predecessors, uh, its successors. Mm-hmm. You know, the the kids. Soul Calibur Two from the Soul Calibur franchise is probably the smoothest of its of it, of that series. Like, if you want the smoothest combat, you find your GameCube, find that old PlayStation Two, boot up Soul Calibur Two because it. it I mean, and Soul Calibur Six. The lightest one, closest to the smoothness that I used to have in Soul Calibur 2. Still not as good, in my opinion. So mm. me, if I had to pick one game to immortalize from the Soul Calibur series as the smoothest, is Soul Calibur 2. So sometimes that gameplay feel, it's not the lightest graphics. They changed something in the code. <laughs> well, the thing is, I mean, I you know, and it's not, I'm, I'm, I mean, as you know, like, I'm not even, a, I don't even really like Destiny in terms of the whole package, but I, there's no doubt when I played the game, I was like, yeah, this gameplay is... I can see why people love it. Yeah, even when I tried so it, I could tell that the gameplay and the uh, combat on it was good. Mm. It just yeah. didn't drag me in. But then again, I wasn't no, no. a massive fan of Halo, so I was never really going to like Destiny, probably. But um, yeah, you know, well, I mean, I, I, was just... I totally understand boys about about you know having that game series that's really popular. You just mm. don't really get. For me, yep. it's uh, from from a shooter perspective. For me, it's the Call of Duty series. I've mm-hmm. played them. I've played them with friends. I've had a lot of fun. Not going to deny it. But it, you know, if if I have to pick a shooter to play, that's not the one I'm going to pick. Well, what yeah. I would say is though, with Call of Duty, I, I kind of I get your point, but I would say that's probably uh, not a close second to how Destiny feels. But Call of, the way Call of Duty games feel is probably the second in terms of how you know, in terms of shooters, how they feel because they feel great as well. To be fair, no. like, I'm but, waiting um, for a place for Battlefield to redeem itself because like <laughs> Battlefield yeah. was was the one that I really liked in smoothness and until Destiny came along. And now I'm just, I picked up Battlefield 1 when it released back in the day, and I regret that. I actually, that's one purchase that I'm not happy about <laughs> that I have. I don't think they've really, since Battlefield 4, they haven't really, uh, I don't know, the other ones have just happened. Which was the Battlefield on Xbox One, day one, and we just couldn't play so Is that 4? Battlefield yeah. 4, which is annoying because that game was really good, but the problem was it just didn't work at launch, which affected, I think it affected a lot of people's opinions on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately. I mean, that's, that's I mean, that's the other thing i'm gonna say like maybe it's just me maybe but more and more now we get these day one games that aren't quite working on day one yeah tell me about it almost like it's on purpose isn't it because they know they can patch it yeah and and you know what let me just take this is something (laughs) that i'm actually really glad that you know a lot of fans you know cyberpunk uh, 2077 is uh just around the corner yep Right, normally it would have already been released. Actually, its original release date was gonna it was before this, and they delayed yeah. it, and then they delayed it again. Um, but I'm glad that they did that because I'd rather have a good day one game. And this is a personal opinion; maybe other people would disagree, but I'd rather have a game that it isn't gonna bug out and crash my system mm. when it first day. Be oh, because we can patch it. No, no, no. Yeah, finish the job. That's something we've talked about a lot. We, we, yeah, we, we've <laughs> yeah, said we're with you. That, we don't like the common trend of oh it's fine it, it, you know you can imagine these discussions can't you now oh, but hang on a minute it's, bit, oh, it's fine we can just patch it later down the line you know and in the past when there was no updates you couldn't do that because if you did that your game was broken forever yeah and that was it <laughs> whereas you know since the i guess it was the 360 ps3 days where it started wasn't it because obviously with the updates and things we started seeing games that were like oh hang on a minute uh yeah i'm playing this skyrim here it's glitching all over the place it's fine we'll do a patch in like a month it'll be okay and that's carried on to this generation, and like you, like you say, Zanra, so it's it's gone worse and worse. It's common it's practice worse. now. Yeah, it is, and, and, and it's and just a common thing. That that's a the more single player the game is, the less that seems to happen. Typically, um, I think um, 
that seems to be it started with more multiplayer games and it's kind of kept that trend of being more often the multiplayer games but it's sneak in with the with the <laughs> with the single player games too and i'm i'm with you guys i don't like it don't do it <laughs> I, I remember well i remember get, well i say a game from last year days gone oh my god that game when it first came out without a patch was horribly broken <laughs> like really horribly broken Is that the one you the got first, me and perks like, to play no days gone was the no i don't think you no you haven't played that i don't think days gone I can't no. remember which one was it. You got me and Perks to play. That was terrible. <laughs> I can't remember, but um, is it State of no, Decay? Was... Oh, the State of Decay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was broken as well. That was a lot of problems. <laughs> yeah, that was. That game that was actually, ended. I, I didn't mind that game. I thought it was quite fun in the end, but the game I'm was broken as hell. I, I don't remember it. <laughs> no, it was, uh, it was broken to hell when it came out, wasn't it? I mean, mm. there were so many glitches, cars mm. flying everywhere, and you falling through the map and stuff. It was ridiculous. But Days Rough Gone going. had similar problems, and you know, it's. Uh, that game actually got affected by it because its review scores were definitely lower than it would have been because of the early problems. So, you know, mm. it goes to show that at least they, at least some games are getting punished. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, what's what's another one that's actually been getting really panned by reviewers? Uh, it's more recent release. A recent game. Godfall. Well, Beautiful yeah. Beautiful graphics, yeah. but apparently gameplay-wise, and this is and this yeah, is what it's I was talking. It's very shallow about. game, apparently. Yeah. yeah, and that's this is what I was. This is sort of build up the point I was making. Like sometimes, just because it's got the highest end graphics, doesn't make it a winner. I, I've got to say though, I never thought that game was going to be good. I think it was pretty obvious it wasn't going to be a good game from the start. Oh, did you? I mean, well, I mean, get for a start of Gearbox. I mean, yeah, I know they make Borderlands, but apart from that, what else really have they made? It's been very successful. Nothing. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm not a Borderlands fan. No. Well, there you go. I mean, for you, that'd be even worse. Like, you've got no association <laughs> with Gearbox, really. So, um, well, it's, well, no, what I'm... was it? Because uh, I never played one. I played two because yeah. my brother picked it up and he said, "Hey, play with me." And uh, I was like, "Yeah, sure, whatever, I'll do it." Um, from as a shooter, oh god, <laughs> it's very fun game, full of references, cool. lots of jokes. It's really good from that front. For me, as a shooter, hmm. And then I'm not going to go into Borderlands 3 because I think they did a lot of things in Borderlands 3 wrong that I never even bothered to pick it up. Um, I think they did some things right, but I think they did a more things wrong overall. I will say, though, um, I, I haven't played the PS5 update on Borderlands 3. Wow, that makes a big difference. Like it, that, it? That, that, feel, that feels like the game it should have been on the PS4, if that makes sense. It, it, did, it definitely makes a big difference. It looks better. It runs way better than it did on the PS4. So maybe that's worth you know maybe trying at some point. If you mm. get well, first get a ps5 yeah well yeah that's, <laughs> that. that's the toughest part but um no yeah no i mean to be fair with godfall i always just thought it looked like a, a bad destiny a very bad destiny club oh did you oh i did well, yeah because I... they went for that not, not in terms of gameplay i just mean in terms of that's the game they want to go they want to be a destiny but with different gameplay obviously but that the model the model they went for was mm. oh because every, everything wants to copy destiny now because destiny is the best example of a shared world shooter right I mean, that's pretty obvious, I think. I think it's, it's done so well and it carries on doing well with Beyond Light. I mean, that's been a success. I'm by not, not going to lie. I actually thought Godfall was trying to go the Warframe route. Yeah, I said maybe. It. I, th I thought they were trying to go more Warframe, sort of like yeah. close combat makes well. In terms of gameplay, yes. I just mean in terms of the model. I mean, they're all mm -hmm. trying to be like Destiny now, aren't they, in terms of success and stuff like that with these shared world games. Well, we'll see. I, I mean, I don't know. Destiny has is not again like no game is perfect. Destiny definitely has its own issues in that yeah. regard. Um, but they've definitely been one of the smoothest in terms of that whole you know cross play, multi creation, whole open world sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I, I just said at the minute people seem happy with Destiny in general. Yeah, no, no, I yeah, I definitely good. have to agree, yeah. especially because yeah. even even with um, what was something? I mean, I'm I'm not the biggest fan of this, but they started uh, sunsetting and vaulting. Uh, content so they said hey we, we can't keep op having everything open it's just going to slog down the game we're going to start cycling through content and we'll bring it back we're not sure when what the timeline is going to be but we'll bring it back and that way we can give you new content and keep the game operating at a good efficiency and i think that was the right thing to do and technically i think they were right to sunset gear so now you have gear from like two three seasons ago you can't just keep raising it so they said we can't keep raising the power bar we're going to try to cycle things out so we can reintroduce them in a different way and sort of keep keep the game fresh as well in that sense. And on one side, that was smart. On a personal side, looking at my weapons, I'm going, 
fuck you. <laughs> I've <laughs> yeah, got some winners. Up. I've got some winners from back then that I don't want to give up. <laughs> it's definitely a difficult balance, isn't it? Pleasing everyone. I mean, you know, and no game pleases everyone. That's the well, I mean, part of it is because you have to grind for it. You have to mm -hmm. find the right drop. Yeah. So once you get the drop, God damn it, I put in the time sort of sort of thing. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, true. Still Abby. Yeah, very true. And uh, it's probably a good place to leave the podcast, boys. I think we've just hit over an hour mark. So uh, great discussion, great chat. And uh, we really appreciate you coming on, Zamros. And yep. where can people find you on Twitch and social media and the like? Well, yeah, first off, you can find me at uh, twitch.tv slash Zamros Relay. Um, I want to say it's, it's spelled how it sounds, but that's always weird. Um, on there, I also have links to other stuff. You could find me on El Julius on Instagram, though I normally do more artistic photography or food stuff on, on there. Um, and then if you, you could find me on El Italiano Vasco for Twitter, but um, that's uh, that's been very quiet, to be honest. I'm not very good with Twitter. Uh, I, I know it's just, it seemed to, like I wasn't very on it before, but then this Oompa Loompa got on there all the time and I just couldn't be bothered. <laughs> I wonder yeah. who that was. <laughs> I was going to say, it'll be gone soon. Yeah, don't <laughs> right? worry about Twitter anyway. Twi tw Twitter's an absolute cesspool anyway. So. Oh, yeah. Twitter. No, no, I, I, I have it. Way. I have it, but like I don't really use it, to yeah. be honest. But yeah, yeah if you, you guys, if anyone's welcome to stop by. If I'm streaming, say hi. Happy to chat with anyone and, and everyone who wants to talk. Perfect. And uh, I'll put all the links in the description below. So definitely go and check that out if you are listening. And uh, also, if you are watching this podcast on YouTube, please subscribe, comment and uh, yeah, comment with your thoughts on the topics we covered today. And also pass on the podcast. Same for if you're listening to us on any audio devices or even Twitch, as we'd really appreciate that to help us to grow as a podcast and uh, you can follow the podcast on social media on facebook twitter and instagram at check reach pod and you can follow me and sud where can people find you mate so it's just that tw on the twitter for me at david tenspud the cesspool that is twitter there the you'll find twitter, something twitter, <laughs> I'm, I'm right in the middle of it yeah <laughs> and uh, you can follow me on twitter and instagram at loud lel 3 ds at a 9 the m for instagram but anyway thanks again zamros really appreciate that great chat and uh, we'll be back next week to discuss some more game news Bye, guys. Bye.